Last part of today's show is getting away from the doom and gloom a little bit and talking about something I missed this season. Not just winning football games, not just that, but my new favorite tradition that we had the two years before that, and that is Baylor playing BYU. Okay, my favorite game is Baylor TCU because I hate them and I want to beat them so bad, but as you can probably tell, we never freaking beat them. We are one and one in two classic games against BYU, and you can't find anyone that has said a bad word about their experiences at these games with the two fan bases. and They just seem to love each other. It seems like a perfect match, this Baylor and BYU. The two, the two schools get carrying the torch for major Christian college football programs that aren't named Notre Dame or Boston College but I wouldn't call them a major college football program. Uh, I went to the game at Provo last year. It was awesome. It's one of the best atmospheres in college football, and that place is rocking. It's probably the best view in college football, and I know you've heard this before, but they're so nice. They're the most gracious hosts, and if you didn't go to that game at BYU, you probably at least saw what it was like in that stadium. I mean, the place was packed. I was there Three hours before game time, all the student seats were filled. They were camping out for it. They are so excited to have a team like Baylor um, out there and playing them. Of course, we were a top 10 team at, team at the time, um, but it was such a great take. And the year before, I mean, they took over half of McLean Stadium, they being the BYU fans, uh, because they're everywhere. And they're so great, and they're so into their football. That's another thing, too, is for a BYU program, which – is right on the doorstep of a blue blood college football program. I mean, look, they've had decades of success. Um, they've had a Heisman Trophy winner. They have a national championship. They have guys in the Pro Football Hall of Fame, Super Bowl champion quarterbacks, all that great stuff. You know, they're not at the level of Ohio State or Michigan, but they're certainly a major brand in college football. And what's great about those is so often when you see the major brands or the blue bloods, the fans are just so insufferable. Case in point, the University of Texas, Texas Agricultural and Mechanical, Florida, Nebraska, Notre Dame. Annoying, delusional, out of touch, not BYU. No siree. They are knowledgeable football fans who uh, don't ever take themselves too seriously and very rarely... Will they annoy you on a message board? Rarely, if ever. And on the Baylor side, A, that's refreshing, right? Because we're used to dealing with UT and AM fans and OU fans, and sometimes even TCU fans fall into that category. And it's nice to have sort of a rivalry that isn't so vitriolic. So on Baylor's standpoint, if we want to be this very nice and albeit kind of lame school, let's at least have a team like BYU on there so we won't get told how lame we are that particular week. Uh, they're awesome fans. It's an awesome setting, um, and they are just so appreciative of good college football and the good fans of college football. And I think that's why this has been a match made in heaven. There are two football programs that, at least in, in this century, I should say in the last decade, are, are very similar. Um, they've had their ups and downs. They've had some very good ups, um, Baylor being – the, the better of those two ups. Um, they've had some great um, figureheads at quarterback, Zach Wilson, number two pick in the draft two years ago for BYU, obviously RG3 winning the Heisman Trophy. Um, Kalani Sataki's done a, done a great job there. Uh, Bronco Mendenhall before that, obviously Baylor's had Art Bryles and Matt Rule. And yeah, let's just stick with those coaches. Um, and so this has been two programs that mirror each other really well. And I think... Baylor is a good secondary rival for BYU because we're not the the toxicity that comes with the, with the Utah Utes of being in in the state trying to just crap on you guys wherever you, you can because you're a Christian school. We're, we're not like that. <laughs> it's a friendly rivalry that can be very competitive, and I think these two schools go in similar waves. So in a lot of ways, it's like the Baylor TCU rivalry, which I do think is the best in the Big Twelve but it's without all the nastiness and vitriol and just pure a holery that TCU fans give you, especially when you're at the game. It's a nice, 
friendly competition. And maybe I'm just drinking the Kool-Aid because I went there and they were awesome to me. But that is a, a great college football program, great college football atmosphere. And they want to play Baylor. They don't care about TCU. They don't care about Oklahoma State. They don't care about Texas Tech. They care about Utah. They care about playing Utah and playing Baylor. They have loved that experience. So why are we dropping the ball on that? Baylor, BYU, it makes too much darn sense. With this one, unlike the Baylor-TCU rivalry, lean into it, man. Lean into the Christianity aspect. Get a trophy that's an altar or something. That'd be great. Let's do it. This should be, I know you can't use this term, but the holy war. This should be it. You know? These two teams want it. They're very similar programs. They're fan bases that actually like each other, but they know they're good measuring sticks on the other side. That was one I was so excited about to see on the 2021 schedule um, to have them coming to Waco for homecoming. And it was a brilliant atmosphere. And then a great atmosphere the next year, including a good amount of Baylor fans there. I was a little surprised at how many Baylor fans were there. But a great atmosphere in Provo in 2022. What are we doing here, guys? Big 12. Brett. What are we doing here? This has got to be a protected one. Play these two every year. It's too good to miss. It's too good for PR. It, it's not going to get nasty. Um, it just makes too much sense for me. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Baylor, BYU. Where are my BYU fans at? Where are you guys? I know you you show up on YouTube and in the football stadium. What do you guys think? Do you Am I overplaying this? Do you think that this should be a protected rivalry? Do you want to play Baylor every year like it sounds like it, it like it does and what your fans were telling me in Provo? Anyway, I also love their uniforms. And they're really nice. And the Cougar guy is an awesome mascot because he's got moves and, you know, runs through rings of fire and stuff. Baylor BYU, bring it in. Call it the Crusade. I don't care. Uh, it's going to be an awesome, awesome matchup for years to come. I just hope it's one of those ones that go year in, year out. Anyway, thank you for joining Locked on Baylor once again. Thank you for making it your first listen today and every day. Let me know down in the comments, who do you think might enter the transfer portal this year? What does Baylor need to do to get better at NIL? And should Baylor be playing BYU every year? I think yes. I think they're one of the great fan bases in college football, and I don't want to miss out on that opportunity while they're here in our conference. That was one of the big coups. The first one, the first big coup that we got to the Big 12 or those guys of the original four that we expanded with, with UCF, Cincinnati, Houston, and BYU. Houston made the most sense, but BYU is the biggest fish in that pond. So bring them on. Let's play every year. Let's do it. We'll be back tomorrow talking more basketball as we look ahead to Wednesday when the Bears will be back on the court playing Oregon State up in Brooklyn. Brooklyn, that's in New York. Um, and we'll talk some more then. So thank you for tuning in. Once again, and for making your first listen today and every day, Locked on Baylor.